All right, we're live. I'm George. This is Marco. Um, a whole bunch of great stuff landed today, including Juju 2.0, the GUI 2.0, a new snapshot of Lexi. We're running Xenial here. And uh, on this machine, this is my uh, my home workstation, we have, um, we have ZFS and stuff. So I've got my... My actual home directory is backed by ZFS with a bunch of drives there. They're kind of slow, so... Um, but I do have an SSD also in front of that. Um, but it's really, really fast, even though the drives themselves are kind of slow uh, because of the ZFS integration with LexD and all that stuff. So, and here, this is kind of a live uh, DStat showing you, like, all my I.O. and load and all that kind of stuff. So the load here on the left, I'm at currently at 0.74. Um, and this kind of shows you, like, the read and write across the disks and whatnot and memory usage. Um, and this is an LXC list. So, so right now I have one machine running. That's the Juju Bootstrap node. Um, and that non-nebula Susanna is actually a KVM that I have on, on ZFS as well. That's actually my Windows uh, installation so I can test Lex or uh, Juju on Windows. And then an empty prompt. So if we do a quick status here, we see we have nothing. Um, if we list all our models, we have the admin one that I call George and then Ninja, which is what I decided to call this demo for no reason. So I'm going to deploy a Hadoop stack here um, on my local machine, on my Lexi container. So this is as simple as Juju deploy, and then any bundle name, so real-time syslog analytics. It's going to go to Jump Store, fetch the bundle. Whoa. The model's no longer alive. Yeah, because you yeah, killed that model. You should create a new model. Oh, okay, all right. Um, I hate that it's not add model, Rick, since we have you here. Um, let's call this demo. And you do this model. And you automatically switch this to a demo. That's new in this alpha, in this uh, release, which is really nice. So now we'll deploy the real-time syslog analytics. There goes a whole bunch of Hadoop, HDFS, Spark, Yarn, all the goodies. And then we're going to do watch Juju status over here so we can see that. Bam, there it goes. We'll move over here, and we'll see already, bam, here, here come the containers start to slap in for each of the services. How many machines does this fire up? I think nine or something like that. Oh, yeah, it's like nine or ten machines. Yep, these are all just coming up. Look how fast that is compared to how it used to be, dude. I really, I dare any cloud provider to spin up machines this quickly. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty neat. Um, as we can see here on some of the machines, obviously we're waiting for the machines to come up. The agent gets installed on each one. Actually, Marco, I noticed that like a lot of the I.O., the machine coming up himself is not that much. It's installing the agent and waiting all that on all those at once. I think that's pegging my machine more than anything else. Um, so all those are firing up. Um, you see the load here spiked up to four. So four James four. asking, why is it so fast? I'm wondering, you have all the ZSH shortcuts enabled so that it uses that to bring up the uh, different containers so fast? Uh, yeah, so this all my LexD, so this is actually what it looks like. All my LexD stuff is actually... Um, let me do a clear. Backified it's ZFS. sitting on the ZFS pool, so it's pretty brilliant. Like when you install LexD, you type LexD init, and then you name a ZFS pool that you want it to use as storage, and that's literally all I did. So. And the good news is the team is working uh, on JujuLand to make sure that when you run your first bootstrap with the LexD provider, that yeah. it will try to make sure to walk you through the LexD init process and set you up with a decent ZFS set up out of the gate if um, you're on a architecture or a system that has the available. They're already up and running. I mean, yeah. it's a that's a full thing. OS. That's not just like an app container. That's like a full OS. Um, and if we come over here, let's look at our workload status. I'm going to have to shrink this up a little bit. Um, but as you can see, we've got two, two more machines pending. Bam, you just saw one start right there. You'll probably see this one start soon. Bam, started, right? 
like we just kicked this off and we're already all the machines are started. Um, now actually the long part begins, which is installing the Charm software, installing Java, Hadoop, all that kind of stuff, which actually takes um, takes longer than installing the or er, firing up the actual machines, which I think is funny. But the status will actually tell us where each um, where the workload actually sits as far as um, its status. So Rick, do we because we're not using resources for these yet, we're not caching we're right. not caching a lot of these resources, yeah, right? Exactly. And what, what will be nice is with resources you'll be able to um, across units at least be able to stick them, they'll be in the controller itself local to your deployment. So additional units will be able to fetch the resource from the local controller and not have to go out to the internet for it. Um, right. So right. There'll, there'll be some optimization. Um, it'll definitely evolve more over time. Uh, as you see, we, you can kind of tackle the problems in stages. And with LexD and right. uh, this process, we've really gotten the machine allocation part really down. The next steps are really optimizing the actual software delivery with tools like resources or some other things in the roadmap that'll help with that. But you can, you'll see that getting better and better over time. Right. So what he's trying to say is like Compute Slave 0, 1, and 2, each of them individually are getting all the stuff that they need to install Hadoop and the Java and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, with resources that will allow these charms to declare one centralized place that we can cache as opposed to three individual machines going out to the internet to get stuff. They can just get stuff from one central resource, which I think now we've... The slowest part used to be waiting for the machines and everything to come up and get ready, and then you would wait for this. But now it seems that we've removed that part of the equation, and now we can move on to the other parts of the stack as far as helping the workload get get faster. So th this is no longer interesting because those machines are up and running um, until I tear it down. But you can see the load is is still is still climbing. Um, ooh, and we're getting cache numbers here. I think L2ARC is the interesting one, I think. That's what I have set up. Yeah. But I don't think I'm hitting that that much because um, that's a read cache. I need to put another SSD in here, and I want to do a write cache as well because why not? I mean, um, <laughs> the really nice thing about these containers is they're lightweight. I'm running – if I had this many VMs, my machine would not be responsive, and I'm doing the broadcast and the hangouts and everything, and my machine is very responsive. Like, I'm running a full desktop here with three monitors and everything. No issues. So that's... Definitely cool. That's happening. Um, and you can see this one has moved on to fetching resources here, and then they'll start to relate and things like that. So... Um, so this will finish up, but I just I wanted to show somebody that initial launch because that was freaking fast. Because I fired it off and then I went to the bathroom and I came back and I was like I thought I had an error or something <laughs> because I was expecting, you know, the machine to be really like sluggish and yeah. And do me a favor. You want to do it? Like, oh, it's it finished. Like I missed it. Like, you want to tinker with a couple other cool ones in this beta? Yeah, you want to show us cool stuff while I'm yeah. here? Yeah, while you're here, yeah. Um, why don't you, me if I run uh, Juju Update Dash Clouds? Clouds. No, it should be a no op, but notice yep. it did actually wait and go fetch. So we talked before about how we'll automatically be able to fetch updates to cloud regions and, and things that Juju knows about without yep. installs of Juju. So that's there in this beta. Um, try Juju space autoload dash credentials. Yeah, so I don't think I have my AWS. No, you may not have any. Um, but if you use AWS, Google Compute, Azure, I thought there was one other one. I'll have to check the release notes. Uh, uh, Nova, Nova, Nova RC. Nova, right, Nova if you have an OpenStack. Um, it will now reach out to the standard locations for those credentials and auto-load them into your uh, Juju credentials, which is really kind of cool uh, to mm -hmm. help save you time in getting your credentials going. Um, see, what else is kind of quick and easy, awesome ones in this one? So I saw something in the release notes I wanted to ask about. Sure. Um, it mentioned LexD containers in addition to the LexD provider. Does that mean you yeah. could you deploy two col LexD colon machine number? or? Yeah. I, did that make this beta? I'll be honest. I've well, seen stuff go by, and I don't know what's in and what's not in. So It was in the release notes. <laughs> if it's in the release notes, then yeah. Uh, yes, definitely. So when we talked about replacing uh, LXC, 
um, with LexD. That's through and through. And one of the things you could do before was to deploy a LexE LX container onto an existing machine. Um, and if you go into like the GigiGUI machine view, you can see when you create a machine, you can go in and create containers in that machine. Oh, we forgot to add the GUI. Um, yeah, the GUI. Oh, why don't we have that? Oh. Yeah, George, just deploy the GUI. <laughs> Famous last words. No. Uh, there, like yeah. this, right? Well, I don't. I we have, I haven't tried this, but uh, no. you don't need to do it to zero though. But I mean, I would just deploy it, and then we could try something else there. Yeah, just I just deployed Juju GUI to be honest, George. Because I, I I was wondering what the syntax was. Cause I tried to deploy LexD colon uh -huh. zero, and it did it, but then it said container type not supported. So I'm wondering, does it require Xenial to work, or well, it's going to have to be anywhere that LexD is uh, two dot is available, which is definitely going to lock you down to Xenial because I believe we don't have backports and such enabled on default on machines and things. So you'll probably have to create a machine, add machine or something with a Xenial series, series. Okay. Um, or deploy a charm on Xenial and then attempt to create a LexD container on it. That's um, but is the container it. type will be LexD or will it continue being LexC? No, no, no. Uh, it'll be LexD. Um, okay. Um, it should definitely be LexD. Cool. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll be replacing that throughout everything that you could do LXC before will be LexD uh, in 2.0. Yeah. You notice after the initial slam of installing the agents on all the um, instances and stuff, my load is back down to 3 now, even though it, it, it peaked at 12. Nice. Um, all right. So there's the GUI. How do I go to the GUI here? So I'll give you guys a hint ahead. In the next yeah. beta, there'll be a Juju GUI command at the command line. What? That's will that right. Huh? What will it do? What will that do? Uh, what it will do is it'll actually open in your browser the Juju GUI in your controller without you having to install it first. Oh, wait. Is that you it. putting GUI by default? Uh, maybe. Come see us at the next beta. Leave a little something. Yeah, it's for a convenience beta. command. You're basically just auto deploying the GUI for me with one. No, no, it's actually going to ship like tools with Juju. So when you bootstrap, you don't know it or not, there'll be a Juju GUI there waiting for you. So once bootstrap's done, you'll be good. You won't have to deploy it separately at all. Yeah, it's almost as if now the agent initialization and installation is now the pain point now as opposed to what it used to be like before. Yeah. Actually, Marco and I were kind of thinking out loud, like, could we do an image with an agent in there already and kind of lie? Like, a, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I think we've talked about that stuff before, and, and it's it's not as... It's tricky because um, uh -huh. there's a lot of uh, key configuration and secrets and stuff that are used for Juju to communicate internally that are right. unique, right? And so what you have to do is you have to have an image that has an agent but a non-configured agent that still has to have ways of getting, you know, a bunch of private data shoved in right, at right. a time. So um, it's something that it's we could definitely do, but it's it's one of those like I don't want it to seem like it's as as trivial as it might seem, right? Do yeah, you know, one, yeah. Save a little bit. Well, here it comes it's installing yeah. already. I mean, the agent. I just think it's so interesting that the entire OS can come up before the agent. I mean, it, that wasn't even close compared to the speed it took to get these bad boys up and running. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, you're also yep. pegging your entire disk trying to install Apache Hadoop-based software. Yeah. yeah it's true. about 10,000 Java dependencies. Yeah. No, no, I'm talking about the initial creation of the OS yeah. versus the yeah. the other. Yeah. The other can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can. Yay, my mic works now. Um, so something I was thinking about doing this weekend is tossing in the other disk, which does as a write cache and seeing how that improves... Because this is all I.O., right? This has to be all I.O., right? Yeah. Because the fetching resources is the networking bit. Um, and these are slow. These are like my old Western Digital Green drives that I didn't want to trust with any real data. So these are like 1,500 RPM drives. Oh, you so should see how fast it is on SSD. You put, put, your, put your, like, varlib lxd directory on SSD, and this is insanely fast. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do from... I think just on all my non-laptop machines, I'm going to put a spare disk and just make a ZFS. Just throw yeah. the whole disk at ZFS and then let LexD figure it out. Um, cool. Now you're making me want to go 
pull back up the release notes here to look at what other else. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, yeah, you don't. So you don't have a mass and stuff to talk to with a lot of this. Um, uh, yeah, you I have, just. You have I just switch. wanted to show everybody how fast the initial launch was. Yeah, um, we've got the shortcuts put in to help you edit the files less. Uh, the set default region and set default credential commands are in there. Um, update clouds we did. Switch user command. Um, so what would you know might be? I don't know. Can you do that now? I'm trying to remember if that's in this or not. Um, Mar Marco fired at his GUI, and there's definitely user stuff in there. Yeah, like could, I, I'm trying to yeah. remember. If, I'm trying to remember if add user is functioning in this in this beta or not. So just try to like juju add user, you know, Rick. Mm. And disclaimer: this may not be there yet. Yeah. I know the super awesome sharing bit is. Still okay, there. so I think what I'm gonna do next Monday is actually do like a real like prepared kind of yeah. live demo that shows the GUI and all that stuff. I just it's like Friday, everyone's leaving for the weekend, and I was like. Oh, let me just try this. Marco told me, and I was like, "Let's try this real quick." And it just yeah. came up. I was like, "Dude, I gotta show somebody." No, that's awesome. I'm. I definitely. It's exciting to see the the beta make progress and that it's you know making such a useful impact. Yeah, I mean, this is literally. So this is a 2.0 beta of Juju, 2.0 beta of LexD, 2.0 be beta of the GUI. Zenial, so a, a beta OS, not even well beta one, I guess ish. Right, yeah. and on a file system we added support for like, you know. <laughs> hey, I gotta give Lexi guys credit. They're they're at RC level. We're still chasing them, so yeah. uh, oh, okay. they're at RC. So we're all we're all catching up to their RC. Well, level. I mean, April's coming around the corner. I mean, I think we're all gonna convert. I mean, just like yeah. when all when it was broken because the API busted, right? Yeah. And, like, none of it worked. It was, like, really frustrating. And then, like, the right. one moment in time when everything lines up, you're just like, oh, that was so worth it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for putting us together. It's uh, great to see you. Yeah, this. awesome. So for everybody else, I'll put together a, a – this is kind of just like a, hey, let's fire up a hangout and show people stuff because it's neat. Um, we for sure will we'll get out nicer videos that are more prepared and, you know. Well, what's cool is it's, it's there. It's working. Try it out Monday when you come yeah. back in. If you're I mean, doing farming, if you're doing any kind of work with Juju, um, yeah. you're doing it on another cloud, if you're doing it on a public cloud or something, and you're doing iterative development stuff, try out the yeah. Lexi with ZS, uh, ZFS. It'll save you a lot of time because it is faster. Even though we're right. watching stuff spin, we're watching a lot fewer parts spin than they did a week ago. Um, yeah, so. and we got to find a bundle that doesn't do so much network fetching and stuff. <laughs> like, I really want to do OpenSAC, but I think... I don't think those changes are committed yet to just run a bundle on Let's D on your... I know James Page has done that, but... Yeah, I think the, the key thing there is some of the services like Neutron that want to have full networking control needs, right. need special privileged containers uh, to work inside, and so that's not quite ready to be in an unprivileged Let's D container yet. So there's still some work there to go. Word. Okay, well, with that, great job, everybody, and everybody have a good weekend. Enjoy it. Oops.